action. Okay. This is Nick Edmund, Richmond Scientific. Just, um, the purpose of this video is basically just to show how we pack equipment for export. So what we've got here, we've got Andy here, is packing one of these boxes up here, which we'll use for stuffing. So we tend to pack these boxes and then we'll put them in here, we'll take this box up and it will be used um, to pack up some of this equipment. Let me tell you a little bit about the crate as well. As you can see, this is a large uh, shipping crate that will go by sea, a particular one. Um, heat treated. These are all lined, uh, which is important. Make sure that uh, there's any rest of uh, moisture. What we tend to do as well here is pieces of equipment that we pack. Um, you may be able to see here that we've got what we call stratocell. This material, which is, which is this material here, is very strong and very robust. And what it means is, is that it gives you a, a, a tremendous amount of protection on the side of pieces of equipment. So these we use as corner pieces, front pieces, and you can see that anything that bangs into it, um, it will protect the delicate equipment. As you can see here, all the sides of these pieces are all protected and shrink wrapped. Protected with scrap cell and shrink wrap. Underneath the items, we tend to put a couple of layers of this, which prevent a good cushion. Uh, for transit, to prevent the engine from obviously being damaged when they're bouncing up and down, so there's a couple of layers of that underneath. Okay, so that's a strata cell. What we tend to do as well is um, on the bottom of the particular uh, shipping um, crates, we have a double layer of board, which again gives you increased strength and rigidity. And what we also do is we reinforce our, contain, our, our packing crates. Uh, with timber so that it prevents them being squashed that way. What we also do is um, we reinforce them in this direction as well so that you can see that they won't be uh, damaged if they come back uh, that way. Okay, so that gives you perhaps some sort of an idea in terms of um, the sort of construction of it. In terms of packing internally, what we make sure of is obviously that the heavier items are on the bottom, lighter items are on the top, but they're well packed in between these two items here. So you can see here that this is not going to move in any way. And I don't know whether you can see in here, this is well packed. With delicate items, what we tend to do is we can put any delicate items in these black plastic boxes. Now this consignment's going over to Africa and there is some delicate equipment that's going over there so it would be one of these boxes which provides uh, yet more protection. So you can see how strong that is. Okay, that's that one. Right, thanks Gary. That's, uh, the other thing we tend to do is once we've packed the crate out, what we tend to do is uh, pack out the front of it, again with stratocell, to stop any of the equipment moving, and, and this, um, this prevents obviously these moving from, from any particular direction. So you can see, we put some more in here, and it will stop it moving. Once we've done that, what we will then do is pack out with some pieces of timber here, again, to stop them, to stop them moving there. Right, next thing that we've got, um, Gary, can you start putting the next um, piece of timber in there, please? Yeah, across the front there. Okay. Just while we're at, while Gary's doing that, I'll just show you the sort of packing that we that we do here. So this is a water system. Uh, it's cleaned, um, tested, and then it's wrapped up in bubble wrap, which is done there. You can see that will then be placed in there in such a way that it doesn't rub against anything else. And any of the areas uh, will, will come into contact. Typically, we'll use what we call one of our air pack bags. I'll demonstrate one of these bags to you now. This is a Instapack uh, quick bag. Very, very good. Very, very useful to use. So, basically, to use this, all that happens is you rupture that side, you rupture that side, you squeeze these things together here, there's a chemical reaction takes place internally. I'm going to show you how we would pack 
this Millipore uh, water system. It's getting hotter now. You'll hear it um, uh, explode and rupture the two. Okay, now then. So this is now starting to expand. So, this is how you'll pack it. What it's doing now is mirroring the shape of this particular piece of equipment. That's now full of um, polythene in that shape. So you can see uh, just how robust that is. And that will give that uh, a degree of protection. And what we do when we're packing in is we will uh, place these bags in strategic positions within the shipping container, within the shipping crate rather, uh, to protect these particular pieces. Hopefully, some sort of idea. You can see here the guys are just putting the next piece of timber in place. Um, these are the things we were talking about before: packing boxes just to fill up dead space within them and to stop things moving. So these are robust double wall cartons, which will be filled with um, with bubble wrap and, and then um, sealed, taped together, and they provide uh, some cushioning internally. Hopefully this has given you an insight into the packing procedures at Richmond Scientific. You see that we really do take care of your equipment. Um, not only do we provide decent quality equipment at a good price, but we ensure that when you get your equipment, it's in the same condition that it left us here in the UK. Um, we pride ourselves on export packing. That's one of the things that we do. I guess that's one of the reasons that people come back to us, because they know that their equipment will be received in good order by them. Yeah, that's an important part of it. Thanks very much. Um, I hope this has been useful.